back when we were doing right triangle trigonometry, we defined tangent as the ratio of opposite to adjacent for a right triangle. What we're doing now is we're looking at this trig taking place on the coordinate plane. So if I superimpose this triangle on a coordinate plane, what we'd see is that this point right here is the ordered pair x comma y. So that thing that was our opposite side is just the y coordinate of that point. And this thing that was the adjacent side is now like the x coordinate of that point. So now instead of looking at our tangent as an opposite over adjacent, we're going to look at it as a y coordinate divided by an x coordinate. And we're going to see how that ratio changes as our angle of rotation changes. And so we're going to start by graphing y equals tan x, and we're going to use our unit circle to do that. Now recall, what we're looking at is how y divided by x changes as our angle of rotation changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right here at zero radians. We're going to look at this in terms of radians. So at zero radians, y divided by x is zero divided by one and zero divided by one is zero. That means we start with the point zero, zero. Next, we move to pi over four. Pi over four, y over x is this value divided by itself. Well, anything divided by itself is one. So at pi over four, our y coordinate's one. So if we make that one right there, at pi over four, our y coordinate is one. Then we get here at pi over two, pi over two is right here. Y divided by X is one divided by zero. Be careful, that is not zero, that's undefined. Anything divided by zero is undefined. Well, for undefined values, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an asymptote right there. And then we move on to three pi over four is Y divided by X. It's something divided by itself, but we got a negative right there. So a positive divided by a negative is a negative. And at three pi over four, we're back at negative one. And then at pi radians is zero divided by negative one, zero over anything is zero. Now what you would see if we kept this pattern going, I know that I didn't give us a whole lot of points to graph, but this is basically how our graph is going to look. And it's just gonna repeat over and over and over again. We're gonna use a interactive digital applet here on the next slide to help us understand this a little bit better. But let's look at some important attributes of this. Our period, is pi units because you can see that every pi units this graph repeats this distance right here is pi units this distance to the next asymptote is pi units so every pi units this repeats that's an important thing to remember because for our other trigonometric functions like sine and cosine the period was two pi now let's notice our asymptotes our first asymptote takes place at pi over two units but then it looks like it repeats every pi units if I were to go pi units to the right, another asymptote. If I were to go two pi units to the right, another asymptote. So our way that we show that, that you'll see this a lot, is plus or minus pi times some number like k, because that could be plus two pi or minus four pi. Every, if you follow this template, you're gonna find an asymptote. And we can use a similar template to describe where our zeros are. It looks like we have a zero at zero, and then there's gonna be one at pi. There's gonna be a zero at, 2 pi, which shows that I graphed that poorly. Let me come back and fix that graph. And we got a zero at 2 pi. And the same thing would happen if we went to the left. So what we're gonna have for our zeros is we're gonna do plus or minus pi times k. So if we did three pi, that's gonna be a zero. If we did negative five pi, that's gonna be another zero. So if you follow this little template, that will tell you all your asymptotes and zeros are. Now I want us to use this GeoGebra applet to help visualize what's going on here. And so this applet does a really good job of visualizing that relation, that tangent relationship, the Y divided by X relationship. So as I change my angle of rotation, you can kind of see here how our Y coordinate is increasing as our X coordinate is decreasing. That ratio of Y to, over X is increasing, 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 increasing until boom, you get to our first asymptote. And then what we learned is we got that same ratio repeating again until you get to, boom, our next asymptote. And then she's gonna keep going like that. So I just like that app because I think it does a good job of visualizing that for us. Now let's look at cotangent. This derivation or deriving this graph is gonna be a lot like tangent. Let's just look at it real quickly. But now instead of doing y divided by x, we're gonna look at x divided by y. So first off, if I start at zero, x divided by y, well, that's gonna put an asymptote. That's undefined. So when our tangent graph had a zero here, we actually have an asymptote here. If I go to pi over four, x divided by y, oh, well, that's that's still one. But pi over four, we're at one. 
Then at pi over 2, x divided by y, well, this is now 0. This was an asymptote for tangent, but it's a 0 for cotangent. And then if we go to 3 pi over 4, x divided by y, it's something divided by itself, but we have a negative divided by a positive, which makes a negative. And then at pi, we are going to have another asymptote because negative 1 divided by 0 is undefined. And this pattern, once again, would just repeat. And I'll to answer a couple of quick questions about this. Our period is the same for tangent and cotangent. Our period is still pi units because that distance from asymptote to asymptote, how long it takes for this graph to start over, in other words, is still pi. Now, the thing that you'll notice, though, is that our asymptotes and our zeros flipped. What was an asymptote for tangent is a zero for cotangent. So our asymptotes, it looks like I've got an asymptote at zero and the next asymptote at pi and the next asymptote would be there at two pi. So our asymptotes are at plus or minus pi k units. Some books will use an n there instead of k, but that's just going to be some multiple. But then our zeros take place where tangents asymptotes took place. So if this first zero, if we say it's at pi over two, well, then we can just go to the left or right pi units to get to the next zero. Now, last slide summarizes everything that we've got. Here is the basic difference between tangent and cotangent. I've got tangent over here on the left. Our zeros are at pi k units, and our asymptotes are at pi over 2 plus pi k units. I'll probably put a plus or minus in there, technically, depending on how we define k. Period for both of these is pi. That's in common between both of those, but that's still important to remember because that's different than what the period was for sine and cosine. And then lastly, I've got cotangent over here in blue. And our main thing that we need to notice is that what was an asymptote for tangent is a zero for cotangent. What was a zero for tangent is actually an asymptote for cotangent. That is how you graph tangent and cotangent.